everyone. Uh, welcome to your yin class. Uh, it's going to be an hour long. The Instagram poll has spoken and they decided on we're going to do hips rather than spine today. That being said, make sure you have all the props that you need. I'd highly recommend blocks or pillows if you don't have blocks. Uh, something cushy that you can use to rest your forearms on, to rest your hips on. Uh, remember in yin, we want to be able to hold the poses for lengths of time rather than intensity. So a little bit for a longer period of time is better than a highly uh, intense sensation for a short period of time, if that makes sense. We're going to start in a meditation position. So come to a tall seat. You may want to use a block underneath your sit bones to get your hips over your knees. This helps to slacken the hip flexors a little bit. And by all means, if you'd rather do child's pose or lie on your back, all good too. Place your hands in a comfortable position, either in your lap or along your thighs. And because this is a yin practice, I invite you to flip your palms down. It creates a more grounding quality. And then bring your thumb and index finger to touch. And close your eyes haven't already or just a soft gaze towards the floor. Now seal your lips and just start to breathe in and out of your nose. And let your intention today be to pay attention. Pay attention to your breathing. Pay attention to the sensations that you feel. Because yin, it's a little bit different than restorative because yin, you do actually want to feel something in the targeted area that we're going to be working on. And those sensations after a couple of minutes can feel somewhat pungent and really, really strong. So I invite you to speak back to those sensations with your breath and specifically the exhale. The exhale is the yin portion of the breath, the inhale being more yang in nature. And although both make up a breath cycle, the inhale, the exhale, Rather than opposing each other, they actually complement one another. So your yin practice can be a really, really nice complement to the other things that you do in your life that are much more yang-based. Now the body is always trying to find homeostasis in every which way it can your heart rate, muscular tone, breathing rate, immunity, and it all works through the nervous system. So if we can calm that nervous system, help you gain control. Control of your breathing, control of your thoughts, decisions, behaviors. Despite the strong sensations you're likely going to be feeling in your hips, because that's the focus today. Try to remain as calm as you possibly can. And a nice 
mantra you can use is when you breathe in, you can say let in your head. And as you breathe out, you can say go. So let go. your pose just gently opening the hips up so your right leg is going to come forward at a 90 degree angle and then your left leg is going to come behind you also at a 90 ish degree angle now it doesn't have to be exact all of our anatomy is a little bit different now I want you to turn to face that right shin uh, if you notice that there's a limb lifting off of the floor you could take a pillow or a block don't be afraid to stack up the scaffolding of the pose and if you're okay upright, you can stay here, or you can start to fold forward over your right shin. And this is a really gentle hip opener. We're gonna work gradually because the hips are really, really dense muscles. And I'm gonna time it. I'm not gonna tell you how long we're gonna hold in each pose. <laughs> but I'm gonna time it so that it can be exact for your right side and your left side. Now, as I said earlier, I highly recommend starting really, really slow and then working your way into the posture versus finding, you know, your full expression of the pose right away and then halfway through coming out. Our bodies are constantly bombarded with you know the world we're taking in the world through our five senses so it's nice to close your eyes and take away one sense sense of sight and it's the same reason you know that when you go to a restaurant and at that restaurant they make it dark, especially at night. So they dim the light so your sense of taste becomes stronger. And you can do the same in your yin yoga practice when you close your eyes. The sensation can become a little more pungent. Drop your head. And if you have you know, the openness already, maybe you reach your arms forward and place your tummy on your thigh, forehead to the floor or forehead to a block. Don't be afraid to use the props. So your body is more likely to let go of tension, of tightness, of stress when it feels supported and our bodies are not you know one dimensional we're not just physical beings we also have an emotional state mental spiritual behavioral there's lots of dimensions to who we are but in yin and in yoga in general we're working on the physical dimension to help all the other dimensions. So the yoga practice is, is more of an, an outlet or a tool to tap into all those other dimensions of who we are.
often, you know, as tightness starts to release in one area, right now you might be feeling it in your right hip, whichever leg is forward, that hip. Pain and tightness and tension, it doesn't like to leave us. We hold on to it because it, it feels safe to do so. So notice if it migrates to a different area of your body, maybe the shoulders, in between the eyebrows, your jaw. So using your consciousness, try and just drop. Allow your body to be as heavy as possible. And anytime you need a clearing exhale out of your mouth, you know, you don't need permission to do so. You can always just do it. your hands and by slow I don't mean fast <laughs> you don't want to shock the nervous system all the good work that you just put in so we're gonna do pigeon now I highly suggest taking your right shin at more of an angle so bring your knee closer and then walking your left leg back so now your hips are square to the front of the mat remember holding for time so taking the block or a pillow underneath your right hip, just to start. Staying on your hands maybe, or coming down onto your forearms maybe. And then closing your eyes, you can take, if you have another pillow or a block, maybe your forehead to that pillow or block. to put some pressure on the space in between your eyebrows. It's also called your third eye, which sounds pretty woo-woo, <laughs> but it's also an acupressure, an acupuncture point that is used for stress reduction and relaxation. It can be used for headaches as well. principles that we try and focus on. And the first principle is finding your edge. And your edge is that place where, this is my interpretation of the edge, it's that place where you feel a stretch and it feels productive, like it's doing something for you. But at the same time, it's, it's also breathable. It's also breathable. When you hold your breath, what happens is, is your body goes into a fight or flight state that is quite counterproductive from what you're trying to achieve. So what happens in a fight or flight state, a couple of physical things, actually a lot of physical things. So fight or flight, it, it doesn't matter if you know, it's a one out of 10 on the fight or flight or a 10 out of 10. Your body at any given moment is either in a fight or flight state 
or a rest and digest state. It's in one or the other. And if you have a balanced nervous system, you'll probably throughout the day bounce from one to the other. Like your nervous system, it's able to come out of that fight or flight state. So that's a healthy nervous system. When you're in that fight or flight state for too long, it can, it does a couple of things. So firstly, it increases muscle tone. It decreases salivation. It decreases lacrimation. It increases your heart rate. It increases your breathing rate. It decreases your reproductive organs. And it decreases your immunity as well. And the fight or flight is there to protect us in short-term circumstances. Versus the rest and digest, that's, it, it, it pretty much does the opposite. It relaxes muscle tone, it increases salivation or lacrimation. So sometimes, especially in these more um, rest and digest type yoga classes, you might find that your eyes start to water. I find my eyes start to water. That's one indication that you're in a rest and digest state. Another thing, you might start to salivate more. That's actually another indication. A decreased muscle tone, increased salivation, lacrimation, slower heart rate, slower breathing rate. So if you've been using the block, maybe slide it out. You don't have to, it's just an option. Uh, sit on your right butt cheek, slowly swing the left leg forward, and then take your feet mat distance apart with your hands behind you, fingers point away. You can internally and externally rotate your hips, so drop your knees to one side, and then over to the other side. So when you come into a long held stretch, you're actually decreasing blood flow for the time being. But as soon as you come out of it, it's like a rush of blood goes to that area. All right, keep your right foot down on the floor. Cross your left ankle over your right thigh. And maybe you just stay here uh, because the end is more relaxing. I personally don't care if your shoulders hike up towards your ears. It doesn't matter to me. I know a lot of people say chest up, but we want to be as, as loose as possible. And if you know your shoulders weren't meant to do elevation, your body wouldn't do it. <laughs> so this is option one. Option two, fire log, the fire log. Right shin comes down, parallel with the front edge of your mat. Walk your hands forward. Your left shin is sitting on top of your right shin. Now this is where the scaffolding can be helpful. You might want to block between your left knee and your right foot. That can be nice. Maybe a block underneath the other knee. Play with the stretch. Everyone's hips are a little bit different. There's no one right way. I'm sure there are a lot of probably wrong ways to do something, but there's not one right way. And maybe you just stay here stacking your shins. And your ankles are flexed, but not overly flexed. Like you don't want to feel your muscles shaking, they're so flexed. 
You just want your toes pointing forward-ish. And maybe you can have your left ankle kind of hang off of your right thigh. And you can stay here and lean back if it's too much. You can start to lean forward. And the fire log, if you know if it's not working for you at all, that's okay. You can just cross your left shin in front. You're probably not gonna feel anything just sitting, but as soon as you fold forward, you should feel a stretch in your left hip. So you do that one as well, just crossing one leg in front of the other. You will have to fold forward to likely feel the stretch. And try to keep your eyes closed. Focus on your breathing. principles of yin yoga. First principle, the edge. So finding that sweet spot. Not too hot, not too cold. Sweet spot. Breathable, but productive. And that you have to play with a little bit and you have to know your body. Okay, principle number two in yin yoga is stillness. So once you find that sweet spot, you want to try and remain still still and we do this by easing in so not doing too much too soon because we are you know there are yin tissues in our body but there are also yang tissues the yang tissues are the muscles they're highly vascular lots of blood flow you know they're red in color uh, they initiate movement they produce movement but we also have all these other tissues in our body, the yang tissues, that, you know, they do just as much. They might not initiate movement, but they, they support. And when I say yin tissues, I'm talking about the bones, uh, the fascia, the connective tissue, the joints and the joint capsules. These are all the yin tissues in the body. And in yin yoga, that's what we're, we're working on. Sure, you'll probably feel a stretch, you know, in, in certain muscles, but we are focusing on the yin tissues. And the yin tissues, they need a long, static stress, good stress, placed upon them. So a nice, long, static hold for the yin tissues. And that's why we hold for so long. <laughs> As mentally, you know, uncomfortable as it is, there's differences between pain and discomfort. I was listening to a podcast on pain um, a couple of weeks ago, and how you know, in yoga land, we're not supposed to even meet the threshold of our pain, but if you don't meet it even just a little bit, that threshold's gonna get lower and lower and lower. So it's not gonna take very much for the pain signals in your body to go off. So your inner thighs together, stacking your knees, and that's going to be left knee on top of right knee. And it doesn't matter to me if your left knee is really, you know, not touching your bottom leg at all. You could also take a block underneath there. If it's too much, you can also take figure four. 
Being upright is not quite as relaxing as lying on your back. So if you're doing figure four, do it on your back. Why do more when you can do less? <laughs> so lots of options. Stacking the knees. This one can also be helpful if you place a block underneath your hips. And to get your hip flexors above your knees, we'll take a little bit of pressure off. Or maybe you want to weave your left arm through, you know, the hole that you're making with your legs to interlace your fingers on your right hamstring or shin. Another option for figure four is doing it against a wall with the bottom of your right foot against the wall. It feels really good. <laughs> Do feel like you've come, you've gone a little bit too far, your breath starts to get choppy, or you know, you're gripping more than you're letting go. I invite you to back off. If you need to modify and change the posture, you can. You know, you're not glued to one position. No yoga teacher is gonna tell you what you have to do. Uh, but uh, do try and meet yourself where you're at today. two more minutes in this position you can roll around forward maybe place your forearms onto a block and drop your head Or you could uncross your ankle and then just one show wide for your legs. Lean back, unravel. Take your legs to one side and then over to the other. You know, any intuitive movement is great here. If you want to do a reverse table by pressing your feet down, squeezing your glutes, lifting your hips up, it's a bit more active, but you can. It's really up to you.
start upright, just you know, turning your torso over to the left so you're facing your left shin. And at any point, this one's a bit more gentle, you can start to lean forward. to your block. So we've established the first two principles. And it's taken me 20 minutes to do that. <laughs> Principle one is the edge. Principle two is the stillness. Now principle three, and it's the final principle, is time. And yin, we want to hold these postures for up to five minutes or longer to be able to target those yin tissues that I was mentioning earlier. Coming back to what I said at the beginning of class, less sensation for a longer time is better than more sensation for a shorter period of time. And that's, you know, that's not the case for every single time you go to stretch. Sometimes you go to stretch and you aren't targeting the muscles. So you only want to hold for, I don't know, one, two, three minutes or so. But after that five minutes, it starts to target, the stretch starts to target the deeper tissues, the deeper layers that we often forget about. Especially when, you know, doing hip work, I'll grip in my lower back, in my abdomen, side body. Really try to take those diaphragmatic breaths, those belly breaths. part of your core. When you take diaphragmatic breaths, you're actually strengthening your core. Because when you inhale, when you inhale, the diaphragm it actually domes downward and it creates support for the lumbar spine. And it's the same reason that if you've ever watched a you know, a power lifter, before they do a big lift, like a deadlift or a squat, they take an inhale and they actually hold their breath while they do, while they perform the lift. That's because your diaphragm is such a, a big portion of your core. If you have a strong diaphragm, it can support you so much.
yourself up. Back onto your hands, slow. Walk your hands back. Coming into pigeon, so I suggest taking your left knee now more, take it more at an angle. Straighten your right leg behind you, so now your hips are square to the front of the mat. And start by taking a block underneath your left hip. Maybe you stay on your hands, maybe you come onto your forearms. Forehead to your block. You can tuck your back toes or not tuck them, it doesn't really matter to me. I prefer mine non tuck, but sometimes for some people, it's too much pressure in the right kneecap. So if that's the case for you, you can keep your toes tucked or put a pillow underneath your knee. flexible person <laughs> and you know this is a piece of cake it, it doesn't take away from the other dimensions of who you are so you still benefit in other ways whether that be emotionally mentally behaviorally you can still benefit from a yin practice and being still finding stillness something like that it's a very low low number compared to all the other like hundreds and hundreds of vinyasa and flow postures so it, it's a relatively simple practice you pick one of the 25 poses you hold for a length of time and you try to be still but just because it's simple doesn't necessarily make it easy. So, you know, if you're struggling to stay still or struggling to stay present with your breath in the moment, you know, I, I, I'm with you. I feel the struggle. It's not an easy practice. Just know that. Try and go for progress over perfection. If you took the block out for the last minute, you can do that on this side too. But notice if right away there's any gripping, any tension, any holding.
to your hands, slow. You're gonna sit on your left butt cheek. Swing the right leg so the right foot comes to the outer edge of your mat. Take your hands behind you, fingers point away. Left foot to the outer edge of your mat and then just windshield wiper your legs. Your eyes closed. Alright, come back to center. Take your left shin down, parallel with the short edge of your mat. Cross your right shin on top of your left. You could take the block lengthwise, snuggle it between your two shins. Try to have your right foot flush with your left leg, or you can just cross your right leg in front and then fold. If that's what you did on the other side, you'll still feel a nice stretch in your right glute. Practice yoga. I actually really like yin because it's not as aesthetic. <laughs> like you're not gonna find, you know, on someone's Instagram, someone doing a happy baby, <laughs> and then they're gonna post it. So I can really appreciate how functional this practice is. and the less aesthetic it is. And because all of our anatomy is quite different, we have different, what I like to call assets and liabilities. <laughs> each posture is gonna look different and each and every person. It's funny, like, sure, maybe, I might have open hips, but if you were to put me into like a malasana or a squat with my feet together, I have very, very stiff ankles. And part of it could be tightness, you know, in opposing muscles, but part of it also could just be, you know, your genuine anatomy, your bones. Um, it's, I guess, easy to look at two extremes. Like if you look at someone who's bow-legged, whose legs, you know, come out, they may never be able to have their knees touch together, ever. And then you look at someone who's the opposite, who's not kneed, where their, their inner thighs touch and then their shins go out, they might have a hard time being able to externally rotate, being able to abduct their hips. And that's just their anatomy, the cards that they were dealt. So all of us are a little different.
take a deep breath in. Stay for your exhale, maybe exhale your mouth. And then slowly roll up. Take your block from underneath your shin. Now shoelace or figure four, whatever you did on the other side, if you're doing figure four, your right ankle's gonna cross over your left thigh and you're gonna lie on your back because that's more relaxing. That's using your arms to keep you upright. You can stay on, lie down on your back. Or shoelace, stacking the right knee on top of the left knee. And you can take a block underneath your hips to get your hips above your knees. That's gonna help slacken things a little bit. Now your knees don't have to be kissing per se. One can be hovering, probably the top leg will be hovering. That's pretty normal, especially if you're new to shoelace. It is not an easy posture to stay still. And it's a lot of adduction of the legs, which is gonna target the opposite muscles that do adduction, which is the inner thighs. It's gonna target the AB ductors, the glute medius, glute minimus. It's uh, relatively common for to pop up, thoughts, emotions. But the nice thing about what mindfulness is, is being able to take a step back and look at those thoughts. So you're thinking about your thinking, and but not judging or criticizing, rather just observing those thoughts, those emotions. I know, I think when I took my first CM class, I, during, I was pretty, probably pissed off because <laughs> things were so intense. And they just felt so intense. So your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings, you can look at them like, a boat in the ocean just kind of passes by and it goes away you know they're, they're just it's information it's information it, it's there to tell you something and sometimes it's just energetic garbage sometimes you know, we've been reminded of a past trauma or past experience. And usually when we have an emotional response, it's because that thing that pissed us off or made us upset, you know, it's bringing something old up or maybe flicking a value, something that's important to you. Every time you have a thought or an emotion, it can be an opportunity for growth, lots of growth. Maybe start to fold forward, maybe not. If you're as happy as a clam, you can stay where you are. You can drop your head if you'd like. We're almost there, about 90 more seconds, doing good.
into the sensations in your hips. Or super pungent. Your brain might right away want to label that as pain. But if you really, really think about it, is it is it actual pain that you're feeling? Or is it something else? Pressure, intensity. Shavasana. Place your feet about hip distance apart, come down to your forearms and onto your back. The twist won't be held for as long. From here, bring your right knee into your chest, interlace your fingers on your right shin, hug your knee into your um, shoulder and then straighten your left leg on the floor. With your left hand, grab your right knee, Drag your leg across the body and then take your right arm wide to the right. A nice little supine twist, almost there. Now, if your right knee doesn't touch the floor, it's okay, you're not a bad person. You can take a block underneath your right knee Remember, it's better to feel supported. Your body's more likely to let go. Kind of like in life when you feel emotionally supported by your partner, by your friends, your family, you're more likely to open up to them when you feel safe. back to center. Bring both thighs in towards your chest. This time interlace your fingers on your left shin. Straighten your right leg out. Give yourself a squeeze. Hug your left knee up and towards your shoulder. And then with your right hand, grab your left knee, drag it across the body. Open your left arm wide. You can take a block underneath the left knee. Maybe gaze to the left. If you don't have to gaze to the left, you can gaze straight up. Or in between the left and straight up. <laughs> Whatever you want. But a lot of the pose to be heavy earthy and grounding.
hands back up. Wrap your arms around your shins. Take your forehead in towards your knees. Give yourself a hug and a squeeze. Contract, contract, contract. And then make your way to Shavasana. You're gonna take your arms wide and your legs wide. The Instagram video may or may not cut out depending on the time, but we're gonna stay here for a minute or so with your eyes closed. Big breath out. Start to wiggle your fingertips and your toe tips. Roll your wrists, ankles. And then bend your knees into your chest. Let's roll to the left side. So you come into a fetal position on the left. This is the yin side of the body. It's the feminine, the moon, the darkness. It's mental. Use your top arm to make your way to a tall seat, facing forward. Put your hands at your heart. Inhale, lift your sternum up towards your mind and then bow your mind in. Light, the dark, the good, the bad, all the joys and all the pains in me honor all of that in you. Namaste.